Du brauchst eine Atempause, ohne Deadlines und ohne Pflichten. Keine Erwartungen, die du erfüllen musst und kein Verkehr, der dich stresst. Finde wieder zu dir selbst bei deiner nächsten Reise nach Kanada. Erlebe unergründliche Seen und überwältigende Berge. Ob du entspannt relaxen oder aktiv das Land erkunden willst, nimm dir Zeit zum Durchatmen. Take a breath in Kanada. Erfahre mehr auf canada.withspotify.com Hey everybody, welcome back to a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. I am Mike and I'm Rusty. And we are here, Rusty, uh, watching these episodes one by one by one, and we are all the way up to season one, episode two. <laughs> yep, January so. 9th, 19th, 1997, the square peg episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I, I'm, I feel like it's my duty to keep up with the intro uh, okay. to the show. Uh, I want it to be known that there was no scream or a triangle uh, nope, in, no screen, no the, triangle in, the, no, in right. the open. It's just the song. Yeah. Yeah. Just the song this time. But also if you're going to keep up with the intro, what was unique about this intro? Oh, shoot. I it's don't the know. first full. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It's the shot. first full alley yeah. shot. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Cause the first one was about, was around the truck. Yeah. Yeah. The first one was around the yeah. truck and then the, yeah. uh, the mosquito fly in. Yeah. Yeah. So we get in there, and uh, first thing we see is the uh, Substitute Teacher of the Year 1996 award. Yeah, absolutely. Peggy working uh, on a paper by Jay Brown, which I can assume is one of her students. And she's in the uh, in the in the in her office, which yeah. is the yeah. quote unquote water heater it's a, closet. It's a closet. Yeah, yeah. she uh, she's working on a, it. It it is uh, the the paper was de- and this is stupid, but the paper was dated 12 1996 and she thinks for a second and then just writes a b like yeah she, <laughs> she didn't read it she, she didn't, didn't read it, it or she, she just, just kind of looked at his hmm, name and a, a b student yeah yeah and then hank calls her and she goes i'm in my office <laughs> yeah and that's what made me laugh because she's sitting there you see and the this, folding chair and, and you and see it throughout the whole show like yeah, her office yeah. is this water heater oh, closet yeah. it's yeah. just a water heater <laughs> closet uh and then uh hank uh is having problems with his back yeah, little back issues. Yeah, so she she asked him about uh, wearing the belt, and he said it's not a belt, it's a girdle. Yeah, it's not a belt, it's a girdle. <laughs> it's a girdle. <laughs> uh, and she leaves to get uh, something that I feel, I, I understand this product is probably nationwide, but here in Texas, I've heard it more more times in my life than probably any other state, I think. She left to go get the Icy Hot. The Icy Hot, yeah. Yeah. I think up north they call it Ben Gay, but I, I think if you're from the south, it's mostly <laughs> Icy Hot is what we get down here regionally. <laughs> and then and then Bobby walks in, and he's like, not in front of the boy. <laughs> yeah, not in front of the B-O-Y. <laughs> B-O-Y. Yeah, she takes That's his right. shirt off. He takes his shirt off, and this is, uh, this is also the first appearance of Hank's Farmer's Tan. He has yeah, one of the true. best Farmer's that's Tan yeah. tans you could get in Texas. So I think that's another <laughs> another like illustration of Texas. Oh, is yeah. that farmer's tan? Yeah, because uh, I think a lot of people would would argue with us. You know, people that are in primarily farming states or whatever. But yeah, uh, to us that that's the norm. That's the norm. Yeah. Well, a lot of Texas was settled by Germans and mm. uh, you know Czechs and stuff like True. that from yeah. a really pale part of the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby comes in the room and he is uh he's looking for a signature or a couple of signatures on his permission slip. Uh he has to uh 
Hank's like, oh, okay, great. Is it uh, for contact football? Ringworm test? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be contact. Too young for that. That's yeah. right. And so Bobby's no, it's uh, sex ed. And that's a point of contention for oh, for these guys. Huge oh, sex point ed? Of oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says. He said, what does a boy at your age need to learn sex ed for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, he, what I've got written down here is Washington – Bobby, go to your room. <laughs> oh yeah, when he got in trouble for him, yeah, because he said uh, uh, he said uh, if some it's some curriculum that Washington's teaching uh, wants right. us to learn. He right. goes, "Oh, Washington, go to your room." <laughs> Bobby, go to your room. Um, and he he tells he he talks about Bobby getting all bothered up <laughs> and how he can't do anything. He can't do anything at your age, especially for a boy with his features. With your features, <laughs> yeah, boy features. with his features. <laughs> Not even worried about the fact that he's 11 years old. No, he's just like, a boy no. with your features, no way. He's just a dumpy boy. <laughs> yeah. what it is. So, uh, yeah, uh, both Hank and Peggy talk about how this should all be taught in the home. Uh, and I've just got, quote, unquote, sexual relations. Uh, yeah. Because Hank ends up going and talking to Bobby. Yeah, he goes and talks to Bobby. And I Wait, guess. Is it Hank talking no, to Bobby? It's Peggy. It's Peg. Peggy Peg goes talks first. To Bobby. Yeah, Peggy yeah, yeah, goes yeah, first yeah. while Hank's standing down the alley with the boys. So Peggy goes in to try to talk to him. <laughs> and she can't even say the word penis. Right. And Bobby finally says, well, she, she says to Bobby, uh, So do you know the difference between a boy and a girl? And she's sitting there trying to, she tries, she struggles to say it. And then Bobby yeah. just goes, Penis. <laughs> And then she just looks dead ahead in like a deadpan <laughs> stare to the wall, gets up and Turns, then leaves the room. Leaves. And then out in the alley, you've got all the guys standing around drinking beer while they're <laughs> they're trimming this tree, which becomes like a, so, a point in the. Hang on, I want to say something before you talk, uh -huh. start talking about the tree. But uh, Bobby has has the best quote in this entire show. Where he says he's a little worried about becoming a slut. Oh yeah, that part I forget. Yeah, you can't skip that part. That's the that's the best part of the whole show. Yeah, he I'm goes, a little worried uh, about, about being, being a slut. slut. <laughs> and then Peggy kind of goes, "Uh, well, okay." Yeah. And <laughs> but she literally just gets up and leaves the room. Doesn't yeah, say a just thing. Just left. Yeah. And then, like you say, we go out to the alley, and uh, there's a tree. That yeah, they're trimming. out there with a pole saw. Yeah. They're they're. Uh, I think it's uh, actually it's Boom uh, Hauer that's Boomhauer up on it at first. And it's because funny. Hank's mad at him. He goes, uh, he goes, uh, if you're gonna prune. Prune, boom, how are prune? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, it's funny because while he's pruning, uh, he, he starts going, hold on, hold on, you know, his yeah. uh, boom yeah, power yeah, yeah. speech. Sure. And then he goes, and then the tree falls and he goes, uh, what do you say? Timber or something. Timber. Yeah, yeah, watch yeah. out. And it like hits the ground. Heads up. And it's already on the <laughs> as ground. It, as it hits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bill, uh, Bill gives us some sage advice about uh, how the army taught him everything. Um, oh yeah, how he, he how he could uh, including how to pick up a bar girl in the Philippines. Philippines. Yeah, he <laughs> says uh, the army taught us the army taught us everything we need, need, needed to know He's, in four languages. He said I can <laughs> yeah. I can pick up a gar girl in the Philippines by saying some ho or, or, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, and then of course uh, Dale has to uh, chime in. Dale is talking about uh, how um, they're trying to do population control. Uh, population zero. This is all part of the UN. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Population zero. <laughs> they keep us down, and then the Chinese come marching in. <laughs> That's right. yeah. 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 Which is uh, now the second mention of the UN and conspiracy theories related <laughs> to the UN from Dale. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Which is, uh, he uses the UN as a uh, scapegoat for a lot of different conspiracy theories i like uh they're 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 you know you're talking about the boom hour speak and he's like oh, dang old condom spencer dang old 50 cents dang old her needs yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was talking about uh, her uh needs. he was talking about a condom machine yeah, yeah. and then uh of course uh uh we move on to hank uh talking about how his dad taught him everything he needed to know about sex ed uh, he said Cotton uh, uh, sh <laughs> took him to the farm. Took him to a cattle farm, and then it kind of yeah. does like the uh, it, it, it does a, a flashback, and it's uh, yeah. you got Cotton, the same height as his son at this time, and sure. of course his son well, he's is sitting eleven. Up on the, he's yeah, sitting he's up on sitting the up on the deal, yeah. and he's like, "Woo, hell of a show! What are you crying for, boy? It's, it's, and it's two cows having yeah, sex, and he's sitting here screaming and cheering <laughs> them on while his son's sitting here bawling his <laughs> eyes out." <laughs> And Hank, Hank says uh, something about, uh, yeah, he taught me everything I needed to know about that. And 
and paying taxes somehow. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> said that he took him back to show him. Yeah, he taxes. took him back to yeah. go see the cows having sex to teach yeah. him about taxes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, so uh, next scene, we see uh, we got Bobby and Hank in the truck, and they are uh, they're driving. They pass the Dairy Queen and the Whataburger. Yeah, first first uh, first uh-huh. appearances of uh, two Texas staples. And so he's going to take Bobby out to the uh, dairy farm, just like Cotton did for him. To show him, uh, to show him what what yeah, relations but, look but like. But Mike, that's where they run into a, a kind of a, a traffic jam. There, sure. Uh, the difference would be in, you know, the I imagine the '60s is probably when Hank was probably uh-huh. growing up. Yeah. You know, there 60s, was 70s, there was probably yeah. lack of artificial insemination at that time. They probably yeah. weren't really doing too much machine work. So when they go to the farm, it's machine. It's, it's, the, it's a machine farm. It's, you know, it's the all <laughs> United Dairy Milk Conglomerate. Yeah, it's no so longer it's mom and pop. Really it's no mom, longer, yeah, it's yeah. no longer mom and pop dairy pop's farm. farm. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, the, the, uh, the machine being used is the Bull Plus Matchmaker 500. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So... Uh, that <laughs> Hank sees that, and yeah, kinda, uh, Bobby gets a little traumatized. Big, big saucer eyes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the next thing you got is uh, Hank and Peggy uh, looking for the pieces of the permission slip. Yeah, taping it back together. <laughs> they're like, screw this. They've we'll realized that. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're 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 upbringing their modesty because uh, an- another scene where Peggy gets a book. Uh, I can't remember the name of the book now, but it was it was something about. Uh, Oh man, the uh, lovely women, the loveliness of woman, the loveliness of woman. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. and it's just got all these pictures of flowers pictures in of it. Flowers, which that's like right. it, uh, <laughs> uh, it, earlier on in the, in, they're sitting at a baseball game, one of Bobby's baseball games, yeah. and uh, she's sitting there with. Uh, I think that's later on, actually, in the yeah, episode. It is. It? Okay, we're it not is. there yet. Yeah, I'll yeah, wait yeah. then. We'll I'll get wait there. there. Uh, I'm so no, you're here. good. You're good. Uh, we we also. Um, now we're part of a conversation between Luann and Peggy. Oh, we're at that. Okay, yeah. And Luann is informing Peggy how there uh, are no longer 14 stages of arousal. Now there's 18. 18 stages of arousal. Right. <laughs> and she shows her some pictures, and she goes, is that C. Everett Coop? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, and, then she t- and then she looks at uh, and then she looks at Luann, and she goes, how could you just be so shameless? She goes, what's it like to live without <laughs> shame live without of any shame, kind? Yeah, <laughs> live without shame. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then we see the flashback with Peggy where she gets the loveliness of woman from yeah, her yeah, mother. Yeah, she gets the loveliness of woman from her mother, and then, yeah. uh, and which is just a book of flowers, it's just she a book says, of flowers. Yeah. And, then, and then we go back to regular times, and Peggy goes, you know, I never even kissed a boy till he was 20. He's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Frank, uh, or Frank, Hank, Hank freaks out a little bit about uh, uh, he sees the picture of an inside of a woman's womb. My boy doesn't need to see the inside of a woman's womb. He's only 11. <laughs> he's only been out of years <laughs> yeah, for 11 years. He's only been out of years for 11 years. That's right. So uh, next uh, we transition to Bobby and Joseph. Uh, Bobby's giving away his uh, uh, action figures to Joseph because he well, thinks they're not he... just action figures though. Right. It's Chandler and Ross That's from right. Friends. I wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote down Bobby and Joseph Friends action figures for some reason. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's giving them away, and uh, he says he doesn't need them anymore. Yeah, doesn't you know? need them. Because he's going to find somebody who wants to have sex with. Him. Yeah, he goes, and that, that's what uh, Joseph says. Well, who? He goes. Well, I don't know anybody <laughs> that wants to have anybody sex. Anybody that wants to have sex with me. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, that was. Um, I, I love the addition of the Friends action figures. Yeah, I thought that was cool adding Friends in too. Uh, friends, right there. That was at the height of his popularity. It was ninety seven. So ridiculous though. Yeah, friends but it's so figures. to have. <laughs> Yeah, just to have the action figures in there and just to have Bob. Yeah. Well, it's really, I think it really uh, shows a lot of Bobby's character and Bobby's uniqueness and weirdness that you get out of Bobby is him having right. those two characters. Right, absolutely. As toys, yeah. Yeah, do you want, uh, you want Chandler or do you want the other one? Um, <laughs> okay, and now we get to the meat of the matter here. And this is, to me, this is the meat of the matter where Dale uh, has found out that they have uh, found some other depraved harlot to teach uh, sex ed. Yeah, because uh, Dale calls the actual health right. teacher, right? And then the health threatens, the, the threatens her. Yeah, uh, and then the <sighs> school uh, picks you know old Peggy Hill, the substitute teacher, Absolutely. to fill the role. Absolutely. And uh, Peggy Hill, that's what she says. She goes, some right wing nut called the school and threatened the health teacher, so she quit. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dale Dale gives a uh, a, a veiled threat to kill whoever yeah, yeah, yeah. replaces her. Whoever replaces her, <laughs> and then uh, and then they're talking about how it's going to be intimidating for Hank because Peggy's going to know everything about sex. Oh uh, yeah, he's getting ribbed sex, by yeah. everybody yeah. on the alley, yeah, yeah for sure. And, the, and he's still standing there with the pole saw trimming this tree yes. at this point. Yes. And then that uh poor poor tree. And then like the camera, I think at this point it goes to Bill, like it, like it, it it goes to Bill and then Bill says something and they look up at the tree and the tree it, it's phallic at this point. Right. And Bill <laughs> goes Maybe you should uh, talk to Sigmund Freud. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and then Hank looks up and goes, oh, and he starts pulsing on right. the bottom of the tree to cut it down. <laughs> I, I do want to bring up that uh, at some point, uh, private parts were mentioned as dinkies and woohoos. Yes, dinkies, woohoos. That was actually the women sitting on the right. uh, sitting at the baseball game. Dinkies and woohoos. And that's when that woman talks about the book she goes my mom gave me that book every time i had sex i just think of flowers and then so, Peggy goes you poor poor woman so she that that's bonnie bonnie and yeah. she goes uh every time my husband would crawl all over me at night to do his business i'd close my eyes and just think of those pretty pretty flowers <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh poor, bonnie you poor poor, poor woman, woman. <laughs> yeah that's great yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> then we get uh, Bobby being teased at the baseball game about his mom uh, teaching sex ed because uh, he does. Uh, he gets a hit. Yeah, he gets which a is hit. Weird. Run, Bobby, run. Well, they say they say go all the way, go, go all, all the way, way. Yeah, and then from the, the crowd you hear go all the way, you perf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this family is in total tor- turmoil. Turmoil, turmoil at this point. Turmoil. Uh, turmoil. Turmoil at this point. And uh, this is when they don't need it, but they get it. A, uh, a call from Dale with a, uh, a threat uh, towards Peggy. You don't know me. <laughs> That's how yeah, you don't to... know me, but I know where you live. <laughs> Dale, are you wanting to talk to Hank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So um, now we've got Hank. Uh, he, he and he and Peggy are are going to bed. Uh, and Hank picks up a textbook that's called uh, the male sex organ. Oh, and then it has and that it has a fold the out. fold out that's about <laughs> forty inches long. Yeah, and he's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, of course Peggy, not phased by any of this stuff, which she usually isn't, uh, wants to know if uh, he wants to put pretty feet and hands on her back. And he yeah. said, well, isn't that for your feet and hands? Oh, it makes you soft all over. She goes, I should put some on your elbows. And then he goes, where in the hell are my elbows going if they need to be smooth? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. That's pretty and funny. And then she reinforces the fact that she's a substitute teacher. She teaches where she, what she, what's needed. She goes where she needs to go. Oh, yeah, she does this. Uh, she's a soldier. R- real doubt, like, like real, uh, 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 real like, like knight of honor kind yeah. of feel to uh, oh, it. Oh, yeah. I took an oath. Uh, That's right. <laughs> Wherever you know, wherever the darkness is in in, in classrooms, <laughs> for the lack of teachers, I am there. I think that's how most substitutes <laughs> feel. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, into very, the fray we go. <laughs> very few of them prop their feet up on the on the yeah, thing and give few. out a worksheet. Oh sure. yeah, no, she, and that's the th- uh, and that's one of the funny things. That's one of like the dynamics of Peggy is like there's there's no other substitute teacher that I ever had that really was dedicated to their job as much as she is. And like yeah. you have career teachers and yeah, you have. Sure career paraprofessionals and right. stuff like that but career substitute teachers i feel like that that's that that is that is a badge of honor that for is peggy. a badge of honor you're for, you're for, absolutely for, right for peggy for yeah. sure yeah and I, I i i hate how she goes away from it later but i do love her other her other jobs yeah her other gets. jobs are whoa yeah just as good yeah. just as good uh, for okay. content for sure and then uh they get into a little bit of an argument because because hank doesn't want her to teach it she she gives the whole oath speech and uh, Hank reminds her of those Randy Travis tickets uh, that they had one time and uh, those poor kids didn't get to make their clay ashtrays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, she is a huge Randy Travis fan, which uh, is another trivia point on this episode too. Oh, yeah. At the very end of it, I wait till we get to the very end. But sure. it's another trivia point. Uh, and then we get uh, we get the next day. Peggy is uh, practicing these these uh, terrible words. Uh, she is in the mirror pr- pr- practicing the word vagina. 
Yeah, bah, she screams, bah, bah, bah. Bah. and then she goes, vagina. That's and then right. that's when Hank says, well, you know what? We're not signing that, and I'm taking Bobby to work. Yeah, <laughs> so Bobby goes to work with him, yeah. Well, he also tells her the whole neighborhood can hear you cuss. Yeah, the whole neighborhood can hear you <laughs> cussing. Vagina. All right, so, um, uh, yeah, he, he decides that permission is denied now, uh, tries to tear it up again, and yeah. then again, one of those things that I think is very Texas he goes, damn, strapping tape. And so <laughs> this strapping tape, for anybody who doesn't know, is like it's like uh, uh, regular tape that you would use to, to wrap a gift, but it's got string in it. And so it makes it real hard to tear. Mm-hmm. And I can remember my grandparents using that on things. I don't know why, but, uh, you know, it's not like we were putting a bunch of legal documents back together yeah. when I was a kid or anything. But anyway, he's uh, very mad at the strapping tank. Or strapping tape, and then he ends up taking Bobby with him, like you said. Uh, we see Peggy going to the school. Uh, her purse is vibrating. She has to turn that off because for some reason she's taking marital aids to school. Yeah, with yeah, her. yeah. I'm not sure why she did that. Not yeah, real sure. Not real yeah. sure. I mean, I, know, I don't remember any sex ed class I talked with her. They had uh, dildos and stuff in class. No, so. I don't remember any dildos sitting yeah, around. Yeah, I don't uh, think they used hot dogs or bananas. I mean, it was all <laughs> it was all actual visual aids on right. slideshows. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Bobby is uh, is questioning uh, Hank the whole time. He's, uh, he's wondering, he goes, what do you think mom's telling him? What do you think she's telling him? He says that probably three or four times. And then my favorite question from Bobby is, uh, Dad, do you ever have sex anymore? <laughs> yeah, he's sitting there asking him about all these sex questions and stuff like that. And he goes, well, Dad, I guess I won't have sex. And he goes, well, I don't want to. He, he kind of gets upset by that. He goes, well, don't yeah, say that. Sure, sure. He said, you're a boy. He said, I hope one day you'll have sex. <laughs> He says, uh, he says, Dad, why is it okay for boys to do it but not girls? And Hank uh, tells him about the double standard. He tells yeah, he him, goes, that's the great double standard. He says, yeah. don't knock it. We got the long end of the stick. <laughs> yeah, don't knock it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, this is, this is the learning point in, uh, in the, this episode of King of the Hill where Hank realizes he was wrong. You know, he doesn't need to be mad at Peggy. And he says, you know, your mom's not bad. She's just doing her job. Uh, he feels bad for her and talks about the uh, difference between boy and girl hookups. Yeah. Instead the of, hookups, instead of yeah. talking about penis calls and Calls them vaginas, hookups. He talking about it. tanks. Yeah. He calls it the boys and girls hookups. The hookups. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to uh, Peggy. She's kind of struggling uh, in the classroom. Hank brings in Bobby. We see the little wry smiles uh, shared between them, and, and now everything's going to be okay. And then uh, come to find out. Nobody has the permission to slip. It wasn't that big a deal it anyway. It wasn't that big of a deal anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, she says, if you don't have your permission slip, you can go to the library and read or whatever she says. And the says. whole class leaves. The entire class with the exception and of Bobby Except leaves. for Bobby. And that's yeah. cool, though. And, I found, and that's what I liked about that show is, is uh, at the end of the day, she's forced to have this conversation with her son yeah, yeah. that at the very beginning of the episode, she couldn't even say penis or vagina. That's right. And then now at the end of the episode, you've reached the, the pinnacle <laughs> of her modesty and she's gotten past it. And she now uh-huh. can finally sit and have and a they, conversation with her son. And what about I think sex. is so funny, they had to leave the house to do it. Yeah, they had to leave the house. So it's got to be like they're in this formal classroom <laughs> setting That's to right. make her feel comfortable to yeah. do it. But, yeah. I mean, I guess whatever it takes to teach your kids about sex, I guess. And so we get we get towards the end here. Uh, and uh, you want to tell us about the Randy Travis? Yeah, so at the very end of the episode, you have, uh, you know, the the intimacy comes back into their relationship that yeah. was lost throughout the whole relationship, well, the whole sent, episode. Hank sends everybody away. Yeah, he goes, I sent them to a double feature. That's right, double <laughs> yeah. feature like that. And he goes over anymore. there and <laughs> fires up the record player and yep. spins it up. So... Uh, uh, you get uh, the first, uh, I believe, non-refreshment song is right here. Yeah. And it's yeah. I Won't Love You Anymore by right. Randy Travis. Right. And uh, plays that song out. And uh, okay. that is the, fir- like I said, I believe that's the first. Well, here, here's here's one more thing. Okay. Uh, well, there's two more things. One is they start kind of dancing, slow dancing. Oh, they slow dance. He talks yeah, yeah, about yeah. his smooth elbows. <laughs> yeah, she got his elbows smooth. And then yeah. he, he says something like, I think I remember you like to be dipped. And she said, watch your back. Right. And then when he dips her, they he fall falls down. to the floor. That's right. Everybody's which is a common the theme in their sex yes. throughout the whole deal. Yes. Is It usually ends up in the living room with 
them falling to the floor yes. somehow, <laughs> or or on a train. When or they on a fall train to the floor. when they yeah. fall, it's uh, usually with Hank's back going out. <laughs> that's right. It's usually how they end up having right. sex, or or Peggy's big feet, or Peggy's away. or Peggy's feet. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you hear from them. Well, as long as we're down here, you know? <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> and so, boom, that's when it goes yeah. to black, and then you that's hear right. the uh, and you hear Dale calling. Yeah, yeah. One then you hear time. Dale's call. Yeah. yeah, but then you hear the the you long one of the steel guitar. That's right. Yep, that's it. And uh, we've learned a valuable lesson. I think, I guess, I don't know. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know what the lesson <laughs> in that one was, but I'm sure there's one there for somebody. It just, it just makes me feel good. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, cause, cause again, we know these people, we know the things they're talking about. We know they're stupid friends cause we've got them all. Yeah. Uh, My parents weren't that so modest, good. but yeah I, yeah, I know people that had parents that modest, you know, oh, so God, it's something that, were. uh, okay. it's something that I can relate to. Now, my parents weren't modest at all. Uh, but, uh, as, uh, as far as, uh, modesty goes, I did have some friends that I grew up with that, oh uh, yeah, you definitely could yeah. uh, Peggy and Hank all over kind of thing. I didn't yeah. know my dad had a penis till I was 35. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in the nineties, I mean, <laughs> that was a, that was a rough birthday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, one thing I did want to point out is, uh, at the end of this, uh, uh, we do get the, uh, triangle and the hoot and hollering. Yep. At the so very, yeah, we, very, get, all, we very get the hoot and holler back at the end. And then I wanted to mention Paul Lieberstein, uh, story editor on this. And uh, I think writer as well. Okay. Paul Lieberstein um, is one of those guys that, that turns up in a lot of places. For me, uh, being a big fan of The Office, he is Toby on The Office, uh, the HR guy. Oh, I know who Toby is exactly. And, and he's, yeah. he's, he's been the writer on Toby Henderson. many – Flinderson. Flinder, yeah. sorry, Flinder, not yeah. Henderson. Flinderson, Tony Flinderson. Yeah, he's been the writer on many of things and a very funny guy. Very, yeah, very yeah, he's a guy. really, really funny guy. He's one of those uh, – uh, like like we've been diving into comedy, he's one of those mm-hmm. behind the scenes, really behind the scenes guys until the office, I guess. Definitely, yeah. yeah. He's really really funny. Well, the office is is like a unique uh, opportunity for him. He goes and does that, and he doesn't have to be on it all the time. No, he doesn't. You know, yeah. you you can you can certainly tell when when the episodes are writer heavy because certain people don't show up. Yeah, because they him, have to be, they're writing somewhere. Yeah, yeah spending so much time writing on that episode. Him, BJ Novak, uh, Mindy Kaling, they show up sometimes. They're just yeah. not always there because they, they were basically the writing staff. And then as far as like uh, Mindy Kaling goes, she didn't really start showing up a ton, ton until like close to the, like yeah. the, in the latter part yeah. of the show yeah. and stuff. When it was kind of writing itself, I think. Yeah, yeah, point. I feel like that point it was on autopilot, yeah. But as far as King of the Hill goes, um... This is one of my favorite episodes just because it's so simple. Yeah, for the first season, for sure. I, yeah. I, I definitely like the simplicity of the episode. That and then, like, uh, I guess the relatability to it, you know, because yeah. uh, we've all had the, the sexual ed experience. Oh, uh, sure. Maybe not as young as fifth grade right. or 11 years old like Bobby, but I feel like everybody had an awkward experience with it. I don't, I don't think that sex ed for anybody your first time is no. – I don't think it – I think it's meant to be awkward. I oh, think sure. It's like, it has to be. I think uh, for kids to sit in there and not feel awkward about it or whatever, mm-hmm. like, I think uh, – you don't have the right. You gotta have sex ed has to be taught by a shitty sex ed teacher. You sure. have to have somebody that's Peggy Hill like yeah, yeah, yeah. in order Absolutely. in order for you to learn and to be able to enjoy that class. I just I, I want to be a part of a real life phone call where I have to call somebody and let a special or a, uh, a special ed, a uh, substitute teacher know that they're teaching sex ed. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be great. Yeah, I just don't that would think, be a great phone call. I think they would skip it and wait until the real teacher. Yeah, back. well, I'm gonna have to pass on that yeah, one. Yeah, you're gonna have yeah. to you're gonna have to get a different teacher. So the another cool two guys that were attached to this episode as well. You yep. had another writer and also a, another director, uh, the director on it. So another writer was Joseph Stillman. Okay. And he also is affiliated with The Office, I believe. Okay. But uh, he also had uh, uh, co- co-wrote Beavis and Butthead movie with uh, Mike Judge, as well as uh, he had uh, some involvement in Doug, uh, Adventures of Pete and Pete. Oh, wow. But he also helped with the script and screenplay for Shrek 1 and 2. Oh, wow. So that was pretty neat. And Shrek, then, Shrek uh, 1 and 2 are fantastic. Yeah. I mean... It's just crazy the amount I of... I think they're all great, honestly. Yeah, I sure. like them all. But it, it's crazy the amount of ties we've got here for Office, Mike Judge stuff. Oh, Saturday Night Live with Shrek. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. So you've got Greg yeah. Daniels. You've got... 
Paul Lieberstein. You've got, what did you say this guy's name was? This guy's Joseph Stillman. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got all these people playing in the same yeah. same uh, playroom here, you know? Yeah, and then you have uh, the director was a guy named uh, Gary McCarver. Okay. And uh, he was also affiliated with some Nickelodeon stuff with uh, Rugrats, Rocco's Modern Life, Cat Dog. But he also was attached to... Uh, the Simpsons movie. Oh wow! And the video game that came out with it. He had he was an uh, animation director. So yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He was primarily a uh, uh, animation director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did animation huh. directing. That's so cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, another thing on this episode that uh, which, some which, trivial stuff. By the way, at the time, really the only other animation that was on regular TV was The Simpsons. I mean, that was it, right? Uh, I believe so. Uh, I mean, if we're talking ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, there is no adult. That was it. It was that for adult yeah. like oriented yeah. animation, yeah. like because uh, animation, of course, was originally adults, then it went to kids, and then it, they in right. the nineties we went back to adults, right? And uh, so that adult market, yeah, the adult market only had The Simpsons right. and King of the Hill, and then Futurama was the next one. That was like the only right. three at the time but to be specialized in uh, directing animation. That's 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 it. Pretty amazing. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen ninety seven for sure. Yeah. And you if, didn't really if, like have a lot to really d- be affiliated with. You're yeah. going to be affiliated with Nickelodeon or The yeah. Simpsons and King of the Hill at the time. Yeah. That was a lot yeah. of what you had, unless you worked for Disney or somebody, unless you worked yeah, for Disney something like that. But yeah. even then, Disney the, the Dis- Disney was in the middle of a revival phase in the nineties anyway yes. because they had fell off in the seventies and eighties. So this is like their their revival time frame right. is the, the, the 90s, like right. like my like late 80s, like starting with like the Little Mermaid. Yes, Little Mermaid was up. the one. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's the, the one, one that, that really uh, start, started them out because when my mom said like like when she was a kid, Disney was huge. Then it like phased out when like, you know, when she was in yeah. her teens. Yeah, it really did. And into her 20s. And then she said that when she started having kids in the 80s is when it yeah. started to pick back up again and start yeah. being like, for kids and kids started having an mm-hmm. interest in it again. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm at this time for animators, there really wasn't a lot of work. So for directors, do you have anything else on this episode? Yeah. Yeah. Actually this episode was not nominated for an Emmy. Oh, uh, and it also is the first appearance that I wanted to mention too. It's second a, episode nominated it's the for an second Emmy. episode that's nominated for an yeah, Emmy. Amazing. So that is, that, that, that's, that, that's a good thing for sure. So, uh, the, uh, cool, Fun facts. This is where you also you get your first appearance of Stuart Dooley, yeah. who is the your dad got fired. He's your, the kid who always just says the the dumb shit uh, your, on the sideline. Your mom's teaching sex. Ed. Yeah, we're gonna see your that's, mom's boobs. <laughs> your mom's. Boobs. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly what he says. Yeah, we're and then you've got uh, this is the first appearance <laughs> of Strickland Propane, the business. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, and this is the first appearance of the uh, Joe Jack. Honey, Joe Honey, hey, honey, hey, honey, <laughs> and he says honey to everybody, man, woman, child. Yeah. Feel the meat or uh, taste the meat, not the heat. Well, don't feel the meat. Yeah, let's taste. Yeah, don't ta- feel the meat. Yeah, taste the meat, not that's, the heat. That's a sex ed class. I'm <laughs> he sorry. asked for the sex feel ed the class. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, Joe Jack. That's 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 the episode. Yeah, that's so great. that's that's two in the bag. Hey, thanks, Mike Judge. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Mike. We appreciate really it. appreciate it. And uh, just in that same vein. Let's talk about what you sent me the other day. Uh, the news came out that uh, something was being rebooted. Oh, yeah. So uh, the mastermind himself, Mike Judge, has yeah. decided that uh, he was going to chalk up a deal with Paramount Plus. So uh-huh. he's got a deal with Paramount Plus. This is for, uh, from what I understand about the deal, it's for what I believe will be a series. Right. As well as... Uh, hour long, hour and a half long, uh, special sure. events, movie special, movies, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call yeah. it, they, they yeah. don't call them movies anymore. Even though they're yeah. an hour long, it's yeah. a special or whatever. Right. Uh, Beavis and Butthead <laughs> in their mid forties. I'm gonna guess by That's the way right. they looked in That's the. Right. I mean they don't they don't look like they're in their thirties, but yeah. they uh, yeah. So they're rebooting Beavis and Butthead for uh, for all of us that they they got them as youngsters. They didn't age well. They did not age well, which I did not predict them to age no, well. No, I don't think anybody Imagine, did. Imagine yeah. uh, eventually at some point they picked up smoking and sure. drinking sure. and maybe were already experimenting with drugs by, right. the, by the way they, they right. already acted. So imagine they probably lived uh, that, 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 that hard trailer life and it, it probably caught up <laughs> with them. Hard trailer life. Yeah. I imagine they probably lived in a single wide somewhere, yeah. uh, you yeah. know. Probably in Wisconsin. You know, oh, I don't doubt I don't it. Know. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty exciting. I was never really a Beavis and Butthead guy. I didn't, you know, I don't know. It did, didn't catch me the right way. 
But uh, to see him do this the, the continuation, reboot, whatever you want to call it, with the characters aged is is fascinating. To yeah, me. it's fascinating for me too. So for me, uh, Beavis and Butthead was more probably like, I'm a millennial, so it's probably more of like a Gen X thing, I feel like, because the music and stuff that they were making fun of was like late 80s music. Oh, yeah. And I personally don't listen to music from the 80s. So A lot of Motorhead. Yeah, yeah, Metallica, yeah, yeah. Stuff like uh, that. Yeah. That's the only stuff I listen to from the 80s is metal, because I right. think that's the only thing that was worth anything that came out of the 80s. I don't really like a lot of pop music from the <laughs> 80s at, at all. I mean, I could skip, you know, music died in 1979 and wasn't born again until <laughs> gangster rap in the nineties. So that's where it died for me. And then was reborn. But yeah. So for, for me, like I didn't really catch a lot of Beavis and Butthead. The movie was pretty funny to me as yeah. a, you know, as a kid, a teenager, I mean, I was probably about 10 or 11. Well, that was your introduction to them, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, and then you go back and you consume all of it now and it's, it's funny now, I guess more funny than it was when I was sure. a kid. But like you said, just to revisit something that you've already experienced and then yeah. now they're aged up to, yeah. you know, not much far from my age, what I am now, I imagine. So, yeah, no, it's that that's going to be awesome. I really think that's going to be awesome. And there's still rumors and talks and whispers about a King of the Hill reboot. So yeah. if they can reboot Beavis and Butthead, we could still keep the, the good faith and keep our fingers and toes crossed. Paramount Plus, I hope you're listening. They they got to reboot Good it. God. It's got to be rebooted. Please do it. So, please do it. As long we'll as we'll see. Just just as long as Mike Judge is around, let's uh, let's let's keep putting out Mike Judge stuff. Yeah, I mean we've got Mike Judge for uh, hopefully a great long while left, yeah. you know. And I would love to be able to see at least so my son can appreciate what I got to appreciate and let him get a King of the Hill for his generation. You know what yeah, I mean? Cause be fantastic. it's funny to me to we'll go back and watch King of the Hill and my son, he likes to watch it with me, right. but I feel like they need, uh, he needs a King of the Hill for him. And yeah, I feel like if they made one for him, I would, that would make me so happy Yeah, that <laughs> for would his be generation. Great. It'd be that funny. Be It'd be I, funny. I just want to see Mike judge continue to do stuff. Uh, I don't really care what it is. I want to see Bobby Hill with Con Jr. Jr. I do. You know, I do so. want to see Bobby Hill all grown up. And I feel like him and Connie probably ended up married, and then you'll have yeah. Con Jr. Jr. or yeah. Bobby Jr. or whatever you get. I just I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm really. They gotta do to it. it. They Boom gotta Hauer. do it. Boomhauer's still single, right? Yeah, Boomhauer's still single. Gotta be. He's got to still be single. He's got to still be single. Silver yeah. Fox at this yes. point. A, yes. a Silver Fox with, uh, the, you know, maybe uh, his car's updated this time and he's driving around in a brand new Corvette or something instead of an old, uh, you know, uh, what, what does he drive? Like an old uh, it's like a G- Chevelle or GTO, something like a GTO Chevelle, or something like something that. Like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I want to see that. And, and the only thing that scares me is, is uh, uh, Dale. Uh, seems like he would buy wholeheartedly into the QAnon thing. Yeah, I feel like uh, at this point we get a a, a bunker in the backyard, That's maybe at, at like least. At this point, he's already yes. dug out a hole in his yes. backyard for a bunker, and uh, I can very much see Dale with the uh, the horns and the stuff of the guy that that was at the 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 uh, January six. Yeah. Uh, you know, the guy that looked like a buffalo or whatever. I see Dale wearing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talk about the QAnon buffalo sh- yeah, yeah, the yeah, shaman yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, the shaman. Oh, there's actually a funny interview you need to go watch. It's actually a real deal interview where yeah. uh, he, he did a phone interview with a guy from prison. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like an hour long interview. Oh, man. It just, it's nuts. With that guy? Uh, yeah, with that guy. Some oh, guy no. named, uh, some right wing uh, interviewer named Andrew something or another. I'll okay. get you the link. But, yeah, I'd oh, love man. To have it's, it. I'd love it's, to have uh, it. it's gold on its own. It's, it's not meant to. <laughs> be comedic yeah, gold it. sure, but it's gold sure. wherever you can get I'm, I'm a i'm a gold miner wherever i can find the gold i'm mining it so. letterman would think it's funny oh yeah, it, yeah. it's it's definitely it's sure. definitely something that you watch and you're like are these guys is, is this <laughs> is it a is bit, it real or is, is it not real, real? Yeah. yeah so it kind of throws well, you for a loop uh okay so uh we got two down that's two down that's uh, king of the hill yeah like a million to go a million to go <laughs> There's uh, 13 whole seasons. It is finite though, so that's uh, that 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 strikes me the right way. Um, okay, so uh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, thank you for loving King, King of the Hill, and we uh, promise it'll get better. Oh yeah, I think this is gold. It's gold. You know, I mean, we're just gonna shine it up a little bit. Yeah. Other than that, it's great. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for sticking with us. If uh, you want to uh, know anything about us, uh, you, can, you can check us out at roguemedianetwork.com. And do we have anything else set up? Uh, 
Like I said, it's gold. It's comedy gold. <laughs> Do we have anything else set up? Well, what I was thinking is like Instagram or anything like that. Uh, we can. We I think, should. I think we should, right? We should do something. I think Instagram, we should do something. Instagram, and then if they want to email us, they can get to us through Rogue Media. Now. Yeah. Inst- yeah well, the only two that matter anymore are Instagram and Twitter Yeah. for audiences. Yeah. Uh, the, like getting impressions on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that are uh, more beneficial for advertisers sure. than anything for Facebook. Sure. I feel like uh, as far as uh, advertising goes, the best place for everything is just twitter and Instagram we need to we need to reach out to all the propane companies in the area yeah we should see if any of them want to sponsor us yeah we should right. absolutely star <laughs> uh i actually uh, know somebody that works at star don't give them free ads oh sorry uh <laughs> Tech star. Yeah, tech star. <laughs> That's right. Or, or That's what you rats. G- 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and no, I know a few people at one of these, a couple of these cool. propane places. But yeah, we should we should do that. That'd be cool. That'd be excellent. All right, guys, join us again next time. We will be on uh, season one, episode three. Absolutely. See you later. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about, Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff oh golden age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness of everything that's right so subscribe today and uh, follow us on instagram at bros bros heroes and if you don't i know where you live not really but please subscribe (laughs) bros and bros and heroes Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story.